Hi, I'm Eric Siegel with Eric's Trains. In a previous video, I demonstrated a basic setup and usage of the new MTH DCS Explorer. This system allows you to run any MTH PS2 or PS3 engine from your smartphone. Now, the DCS Explorer is great, but it is sort of a starter system. And if you recall, when we used the DCS Explorer with the DCS app on our smartphone, we only had limited functionality. We did not have access to the full suite of DCS features and we could only add up to three engines into the DCS app at a time when using the DCS Explorer. Well, the other mode that the DCS app can operate in is full DCS mode. But in order to use that, you have to have an MTH DCS TIU, a track interface unit, and you have to have the DCS Wi-Fi module. So that's what we're gonna talk about today, using the DCS Wi-Fi module. So the target audience for this video is mainly going to be those of you who already have DCS on your layout with an existing TIU, and you wanna add the ability to run your trains from your smartphone. But if you're not in that audience, if you don't have DCS on your layout, or if you've got a DCS Explorer, that's okay. This video will sort of be a sneak peek into what's possible if you upgrade to the full DCS package. So what we're gonna do today is a basic setup and operation of the MTH DCS Wi-Fi module. And what you'll find is that when we use the DCS app in full DCS mode, we'll have access to the full suite of DCS features and we'll be able to add as many engines as we want to into the DCS app. Now, because the installation and setup of the DCS Explorer is so incredibly simple, in the previous video, I was able to do the entire demonstration from my workbench here. But with the DCS Wi-Fi module, it's a little more complicated because it requires the TIU and so forth. And so since I've already got it all set up and operational on my layout, for today's demonstration, we're gonna go down to the layout. We'll actually spend most of our time underneath the layout where the controls are at. And then when we've got that set up, we'll come topside and we'll run some trains on the layout with the DCS app and the DCS Wi-Fi module. Okay, so we are under the layout and this is the control panel for my layout. Now, I know this looks really complicated and it's kind of a rat's nest, but don't let that scare you because most of the stuff you're seeing has nothing to do with what we're gonna be doing today. In fact, there are only two pieces of equipment that we're gonna be worried about today. The first one is right here. It's the TIU, the track interface unit, which is the heart of the MTH digital command system. And then the other piece is over here. And of course that is the WIU, the Wi-Fi interface unit, which is what this video is all about. So first up, let's take a quick look over here at the TIU. Okay, so here's my TIU. And again, this may look complicated, but it's really not. We've got input and output. I've got four power supplies going into the four inputs, and then I've got four outputs going out to the four power districts on my layout. So each of these outputs goes to the track. There's a cable coming out the top here. That is for the AIU input. That goes down to my MTH accessory interface unit, which is what I use to control my switches and accessories and so forth. Down here, this is an auxiliary power supply that powers the TIU. And then right here, we've got PC input. Now, this has a lot of functions. You can connect this to your PC to do software updates. You can connect it to a Lionel Legacy or TMCC command base so that you can control Lionel engines through the DCS system. Or in this case, it's a cable going off to the WIU, the Wi-Fi interface unit. So this is how the WIU connects to the TIU via this connection right here. Now, the WIU comes with a USB cable that is intended to connect to the TIU right here. And if you've got a newer TIU, it'll have a USB plug built in. I've got an older TIU, and on the older models, 
it has a nine pin serial port. And so I actually had to go buy a converter to go from nine pin serial to USB. I think I got this converter on Amazon for a few bucks. So if you've got an older TIU, you'll have to get one of these converters. If you've got a newer one, don't worry about it. The USB will plug right into the TIU. So anyway, this cable goes off to the WIU. So now let's go take a look at that. All right, so here is the WIU, the Wi-Fi interface unit. Now, to give you a better look at everything on this unit, I'm gonna take it off the wall and then we'll check it out. All right, now that we've got it off the wall, we can get a better look at every side of this thing. Now, if you saw my previous video about the MTH DCS Explorer, some of this stuff will seem familiar because really this is a more beefed up advanced version of the DCS Explorer. So a lot of the concepts are the same. And you know, if you haven't seen that video yet, do yourself a favor and go back and watch it. Anyway, on the top of the WIU here, we've got some status lights. We've got a power and Wi-Fi light over on this side. These will be lit today because of course we will have power and we will have a good Wi-Fi signal. Right here is a reset button that you have to access with a paper clip or something like that. Of course, we won't be using this today, but in the event that you follow up the config on your WIU, you can always restore it to factory settings by pressing the reset button that's down in that hole. Over here, we've got a light for the TIU. This will be lit today because this will indicate a good connection to our TIU. And then we've got two lights over here for LAN and WPS, local area network and Wi-Fi protected setup. These will not be lit today because we will not be using these functions. I'll show you how to use these in a later video. These are a little bit more advanced. And because we won't be using WPS, this light will not be lit and we won't be using this WPS button up here. Next to the WPS button, we've got the antenna that comes with the WIU when you buy it. And then right here, we've got this mode switch, just like on the DCS Explorer, and it goes between home and MTH mode. For today's purposes, we're gonna keep it in MTH mode, and then in a later video, I'll show you how to use it in home mode. That's really cool, but it's a little more advanced. Now on the bottom here, we've got a power input that's a mini USB cable input. The WIU comes with a power supply, but if you need an extra one or something, you could always use a mini USB cable and another power supply that plugs into the wall. We've got an ethernet plug here. We won't be using this today. That's why the LAN light will not be lit because we're not gonna use the ethernet cable. And then right here, this is for the TIU connection. This is that USB cable that'll go from here all the way to the TIU. All right, I've got the WIU back on the wall here under the layout, so let's go ahead and reconnect it. So first up, I will reconnect this USB cable coming from the TIU to the USB TIU port on the bottom here. There we go. And then the last thing is to connect the power cord. And of course that will power up the WIU. And now it'll start its boot up process. So we've got the power light. It's gonna check for an ethernet connection down here. Of course, it won't find one. So eventually this light will go out. It'll also check for a WPS connection, but it won't find one because we're not using it. So that will go out eventually as well. When it's got a good connection to the TIU, this light will come on in just a moment. And then finally, the Wi-Fi light will come on when it's broadcasting a good Wi-Fi signal. So let's just wait. All right, so this thing is now putting out a Wi-Fi signal that we will be able to pick up on our smartphone. So now we're gonna go topside and we're gonna pull out my smartphone. In my case, I'm using an iPhone 7 Plus, but you can use any iPhone or Android type phone that has Wi-Fi access and the ability to download the MTH DCS app. So on my smartphone, we're going to download and install the DCS app if it's not already installed. And then we're gonna to connect to this Wi-Fi network that the WIU is creating. And then that will allow us to run some trains from our smartphone. All right, so here we have the engine that we're gonna to run today through the Wi-Fi interface unit using the MTH DCS app. This is a new MTH Premier Line U30C 
with ProtoSound 3 on board, but like I've said, this will work with any MTH engine that has ProtoSound 2 or ProtoSound 3. Now, I know I said I was going to use my iPhone 7 Plus, but actually I've changed my mind. I want to demonstrate that you can use a tablet as well as a smartphone. So for today's demonstration, I'm going to use my iPad. It'll work with an iPad or an Android tablet or like I said, any Android or iOS smartphone. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull up the iPad screen. There we go. And the first thing we'll do is download and install the DCS app. So we'll go to the App Store. And we will search for MTH DCS. And there it is. So let's go ahead and download and install it. There we go. All right, that's done. So now the next step is going to be to connect to the Wi-Fi interface unit under the table. So we'll go to settings and we're going to go to the Wi-Fi settings and you'll notice that in the list of available networks down here there's one called MTH DCS 2084. That is the Wi-Fi interface unit. Yours may have a slightly different name but it'll be MTH DCS and then a series of numbers. So let's go ahead and click on it and then we have to enter the password. When you get the Wi-Fi interface unit out of the box they all have the same password which is MTH DCS Wi-Fi all lowercase all one word let's hit join okay so now we are connected to the Wi-Fi interface unit alright so we are almost done the next thing we're gonna do is exit out of the settings and go open up the DCS app there it is now it gives you a choice, DCS Explorer or DCS Wi-Fi Interface Unit. Last time when I was demonstrating the DCS Explorer, of course we chose DCS Explorer, but this time we're going to choose DCS WIU. Okay, it says WIU found, you're all set. Proceed to app. And there we go, so let's click on Run My Trains. And then we're going to choose or add an engine up top here. Let's go ahead and add an engine. Add MTH engine. It's going to scan for the new engine on the track. It found the new engine on the track. And by the way, the track is powered up right now. If the track is not powered up, of course, it won't find the engine. So let's click on CNO3308. Success! Added diesel engine CNO3308 with address 1. So let's go to run this engine. And we are all set to go. So let's go ahead and click startup. <laughs> and there we go. That's all there is to it.
this should all be pretty familiar to you. Below that, we've got the master volume. If we go up and up top in the middle, we click the middle button. Here's all the soft keys that would be on the DCS remote. Remember, these were grayed out on the DCS Explorer app, but on the DCS Wi-Fi app, they're all available. So we can do forward signal, or the reverse signal, and so on. If we go over to the gear icon, there's all the settings for the engine, the volume controls, the brake options, clickety-clack, cab chatter. Pretty much every setting you could want for the engine is right there. Go back to the main menu, and there we go. And then at the very bottom of the screen, you'll see there's track, switches, and accessories. These correspond to the track, switches, and accessories functions of the DCS remote control. I'm not going to get into those right now because those are more advanced. I'll get into those in a later video, but I just want you to know what those are. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So now, let's go ahead and run the engine. So to make it go forward, I'm going to tap the plus key below the speedometer. And there it goes. Couldn't be easier. Okay, let's go in reverse. So now that we're using the Wi-Fi interface unit in conjunction with the TIU instead of the DCS Explorer, it means, like I said, that we have access to the full DCS suite of features. And that means that we can add as many engines as we want into this system, unlike the DCS Explorer, where we were limited to adding a maximum of three engines. The other thing I want to say again, I've said it before, but I want to say it again because I know somebody's going to ask, when you add an engine into this system, you'll notice there's an option for Add TMCC Legacy Engine. That will only work 
if you've already got the legacy system or an old TMCC command base connected to your TIU. This is not a cost saving feature, it's a convenience feature. You still have to buy legacy or have an old TMCC command base on hand and have it connected to your TIU with the connection cable that they sell. If you don't have that, you won't be able to use that option. The final thing I want to say on the operation of the DCS app is that when you're done using the app for the day and when you power down your layout, when you turn the power off to the WIU, you will lose the Wi-Fi connection to the WIU, of course, and just make sure that your tablet or smartphone connects to your home Wi-Fi network so that you don't lose internet connectivity. So you can see here, I'm still connected to the DCS Wi-Fi, but when you're done for the day, just make sure you connect to the wireless network that you were connected to before you started this. So in my case, it's this one. And now I'm back to where I started, and I can use the internet and so forth on my smartphone or tablet without any issues. So if you're interested in purchasing a Wi-Fi interface unit, the retail price on those is right at $180. Although, if you go through a good MTH dealer, you might be able to get a little bit of a discount off that retail price. So, that about does it for this installment. I hope I was able to show you just how easy it is to run your MTH PS2 and PS3 engines from your smartphone or tablet using the Wi-Fi interface unit in conjunction with the TIU. Now, in the future, I'll do some more advanced videos. I'll show you how to use the WPS function on the Wi-Fi interface unit and we'll also get into some of the more advanced functions on the DCS app itself. But until then, I'm Eric Siegel, and I'll see you next time.